Good morning. Welcome to worship today as we come to celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And then, of course, with all of the red, you know, there's something special about today as we celebrate Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit to lead us and to fill us and to refill us again. I, I would just like to thank uh, a couple of folks that were in my stead last week. Philip led your congregation singing and then also Pat for leading the choir last week. Thank you, gentlemen, very, very much. And thank you, choir, for following their lead and for you for following Philip last Sunday morning. Lisa and I were spending Mother's Day weekend with family over in Raleigh, North Carolina. We had a seven-month-old grandson there. We had a great Mother's Day visiting with family and that grandson so very, very much. We uh, paid attention. We watched the service. We, uh, I guess I listened to the service as I drove through Raleigh last Sunday and uh, glad to have us online. For those that are joining us online this morning, I get it. And we're so glad that you're with us this morning to worship and to praise our Lord. I invite you to stand where you are and to greet those seated beside you, seated around you, passing the peace of Christ this morning. I invite you to join me for our call to worship. As we celebrate, we begin celebrating Pentecost together. Here's our responsive reading this morning. With tongues of flame, the Holy Spirit descends to burn in our hearts anew. Come, Holy Spirit. Like the rush of wind, we sense God's presence blowing afresh in this place. Holy Spirit, come. Across the barriers of language and culture, Christ's message of grace and repentance is heard. Divine Advocate, we seek your guidance as we listen for the Spirit of Truth. The Holy Spirit is here. Hallelujah. Our opening hymn is actually two. Uh, we'll open with a Charles Wesley hymn. Jesus, thine all victorious love. Interesting thing about this, there were 12 stanzas originally. We begin with stanza four this morning out of the hymnal. Four, five, six, and seven. Sing with me and then we'll transition into the spirit of the living God.
your singing this morning. I invite you to join me in our affirmation of faith as we speak what we believe in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. come together this morning as a body of believers in the church of God's church, let us come together and prepare our hearts and our minds to come to God's altar, throne of mercy, and to pray. Let us bow our heads. Most gracious, loving, and powerful God, we stand in awe at your wonders and we praise your name as your children and as your church. Let us hear the roar of your wind upon our church. Let your light shine brightly upon your church today. Let, you, let your love fill us with your anointing and guidance. Let our prayers and praise rest in your glory and your power. As we come on this Pentecost Sunday to experience the pouring of your holy presence upon us, transform us with your purpose, strengthen us through the boldness of your word, feed our spiritual hunger, and satisfy our spiritual thirst. Be our empowering light in the sin of darkness and guide us to the throne of your mercy. As we come before you in prayer on this day, we come in humble prayer for the troubled times in our nation, for the injustices that are all around us, and for international unrest that seems to worsen day by day. We pray for our churches, communities, neighbors, and loved ones in our moments of despair. We pray for our sick and shut-in who are suffering in ways that we do not know, but your restoring love does know. We ask that you be with all, dear Lord. We pray for our brothers and sisters affected by natural disasters near and far, and we call upon your mighty name to aid us to love each other through prayer and guidance and to forgive each other our debts as we come before you to pray as you have taught us to pray together as children of God praying. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to invite the children down for children's moments. Well, today we are going to be celebrating a birthday. Can you tell me whose birthday? Hi, come on in the back. Hi. You were so right. Pentecost. You guys are listening and it sounds so amazing. We are celebrating Pentecost. You can sit down with us in the back. There you go, sweetheart. We are celebrating Pentecost. And Pentecost is a big word, but what it means is we're celebrating the birthday of the church. Do you guys like my hat? Oh, I'm glad you do. And with birthdays come what? What is it that we get when we have a birthday? 
presence. Yes, we do. And cake. And cake. Amen. So on this day in the Bible during Pentecost, God gave an amazing gift. God gave the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so I think about these balloons. Do you guys see these balloons? The reason these balloons don't go all the way up in the air is because we have a weight that's here. And there is air inside of these balloons, right? Well, I think about the Holy Spirit that way. We may not can see the air or the helium. We may not can see it in the balloon, but we know it's there, right? And that's the gift of the Holy Spirit. We may not can see it. We may not know that it's there, but it is there. And the Holy Spirit gift that God has given us, it anchors us and it keeps us close to God. And that is the greatest gift that we can have, knowing that the Holy Spirit is inside of us. Can you guys do that? Inside of us. Amen, inside of us. So as we celebrate on this day, we celebrate all that God has done for us as the church of the birthday that is known as what? Pentecost. Pentecost. Can you guys say happy birthday, church? Happy birthday, oh, church. Awesome. So let us bow our heads and pray for this day of celebration. Most gracious God, as we come before you today, we give you thanks for the church and all that is filled within its vessel, dear Lord. We give you thanks for the Holy Spirit and his presence above our children, above our families, our friends, and our loved ones, and let us stay anchored and close to you. In Christ's name we pray, let us all say, Amen. You guys have a great children's church. As the ushers come, let us uh, prepare our hearts as for the offering today. Let us go to the Lord in prayer in these moments of preparation. Good and gracious God, thank you, Lord, for the celebration today of your holy presence, your Holy Spirit. Impart to us what is needed today in each of our lives, Lord, and the individual needs that are here. And we pray, God, as we give to you, it would be out of a sense of celebration and thanksgiving and being faithful stewards of that which you have placed in our hands. And we pray this in the name of Christ. Amen.
invite you to remain standing for the reading of the Holy Word of God. Today is Pentecost Sunday, and the scripture is Acts 2, and I'll be reading verses 1 through 21. I think it's listed as 12, but we're going through verse 21 in the reading today. Hear now the word of the Lord. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven, filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, uh, bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all of those who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Parthian, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and other parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews, converts to Judaism, Cretans, and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. As the choir was singing this morning, I thought of our late friend, Leon Allen. And how he would have said, let the church say, Amen. Let the church say, Amen. It's a glorious day today on this Pentecost Sunday as it is recognized, as was in the children's sermon today, in Western Christianity to be the birthday of the church. So guess what? We're going to sing happy birthday to the church today. And um, I think as well to sing happy birthday, dear church, in, in a blank where we would put a name. So help me do this today, okay? Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday, dear church. Thank you. You did great. The significance of this day cannot be overstated uh, as it was longed for by so many greatly anticipated by the Old Testament saints and prophets. It was the day that Jesus promised. But the unique thing about Pentecost is when it happened. When it happened. It was anticipated, but it wasn't exactly known when it was going to happen. During the awful days of the COVID pandemic, when the church was closed down and the assembly was shut down, uh, my birthday occurred in that time frame, and to my surprise, I went out to the mailbox, and there was a line of cars on our street that showed up, and they were blowing horns and making noise and shouting happy birthday, and I never saw that coming. It was a total surprise to me. When the rushing mighty wind came, and the tongues of fire came, on this birthday of the church, they were so amazed at the events that were happening and wondered what it all meant. Peter stood up and preached about what this day meant. 
And he used the prophet Joel as a backdrop for his sermon. And including the lines in that, I will pour out my spirit on all people. I will pour out my spirit on all people. So really the title of the sermon is the outpouring of the spirit today. Another key to understanding this is what was happening in the instruction given by Jesus. If you look back one chapter in Acts chapter 1, Jesus said when the spirit comes, Jesus said the disciples would receive power. And they would be his witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So I want to kind of enumerate some of the significance of uh, things of this day and what the outpouring of the Spirit really means. So first, the outpouring of the Spirit is, gives us the principle of our witness. In Acts chapter 1, verse 6, the disciples were anxious about what was going or when Jesus was going to restore the kingdom. And they were asking, are you going to restore the kingdom now? Jesus had risen from the dead, victorious over the grave. And no doubt they were thinking the full reign of God was coming, was about to take place. So they were all like children wondering on the trip, when you're going to get there, when when you're going to arrive. And Jesus said almost tritely to them, it is not your business to know that. God alone has established when that's going to happen. God alone knows the time, and it's not for you to worry about. And then Jesus gave them this instruction. Just a couple of very simple things. He said, go wait in Jerusalem. Go wait in Jerusalem, and you will be endued with power from on high. Oh, it's amazing to consider he didn't say when that was going to happen. He didn't give a date and time. You know, in human experience, big events, when they happen, we like to preset them, pre-plan them. They're well-organized, they're well-advertised. Social media, the bulletin, announcements, radio, everywhere else. We might say, hey, this big event is happening. We want you all to come. We want everybody to be involved in this. And you would think that one of the greatest events in human history, something like that would have happened. But no, that did not happen. We would think Jesus might have said, go wait in Jerusalem and next Thursday night at 7 o'clock the Holy Spirit's coming. But no, there was no definitive time. He says, go wait. Only when the Father has established, Jesus said, go in Jerusalem and wait. So God did not get out, Jesus did not get out a big advertisement campaign to say, come one, come all, the Holy Spirit's coming on this day. Rather, it was in the wisdom of God that God chose the time when everybody was already gathered on this Pentecost feast when the Holy Spirit came. And I think what this really should say to us, if nothing else, is that we are not in control of this. This is not something that we can manipulate or plan out or organize. Not to say that those things are are not good but there's nothing we can do in our own selves to bring about the presence of the Holy Spirit this is God's work we've learned that the Holy Spirit as the third person of the Holy Trinity is absolutely sovereign self-ruling self-governing and we are not in control of the Holy Spirit rather the Holy Spirit is to be in control of us The Holy Spirit, the movement of the work of the Holy Spirit is what God determines in that movement and work that he wants to accomplish. In fact, the word for uh, the Spirit is wind. The wind of the Spirit, like a rushing mighty wind. It was the sound of a a, a rushing mighty wind. Note that it wasn't like a mighty wind came, but it was the sound of that, that wind. But the word for Spirit is wind. You remember Jesus talking to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, and he told Nicodemus, the wind blows to and fro. Wherever it wants to go. And no person can control the wind. When the Spirit comes, however, 
One thing we do know, even though we are not in control of that, one thing we do know, even as it is what Jesus taught us, that the Holy Spirit will glorify Christ, will always glorify Christ. The Holy Spirit will always exalt Christ. And what you see happening on the day of Pentecost, even in Peter standing up and preaching, his sermon was all about Jesus. The exaltation of Christ as Savior and Lord was the very centerpiece of his sermon. So what we find here first and foremost in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is the principle of our witness. The next part of this, and always attached to it, is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit brings the power of our witness. It is the authority of the Father who has appointed the time when the kingdom will be restored. God alone has determined when the end of time will come, when Jesus returns. But within the Father's authority comes the time of when the promise of the Spirit will be fulfilled and the purpose for the coming of the Spirit. And Jesus said in Acts 1, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And that power or ability God wants us to use is not so much trying to figure out, being what I call a clock watcher or a date setter, trying to figure out when all these events are going to happen, as much as it is being a living, winsome witness for, the, for Christ. And that is absolutely what we need empowerment to do effectively. Christian comedian Ken Davis, some of you may have heard of him, tells a somewhat humorous and true story of a guy who was riding on a city bus, and he was the only one on the bus at the time. He was a, a Christian believer, and he was praying on the back of that bus that God would give him an opportunity to speak to someone about his faith. And sure enough, a person got on the bus, and the person was very troubled. And they came all the way to the back of the bus and sat down beside him and said, Can you tell me about Jesus? And the guy knelt down again and prayed, Lord, I need another sign. Could you turn the bus driver into an armadillo? And I think there's times when I prayed for armadillos. And I don't know about you, but Jesus and certainly knew the disciples were going to struggle. And that's why he told them to wait in Jerusalem until they were endued with power from on high. The disciples were fearful and uncertain. They were worried. They were concerned. There were so many mixed emotions that they had in their minds. And Jesus said, wait until you have the Holy Spirit so you can effectively do this. So this is the authority that God has for us to receive power and the fullness of the Spirit so that we might be witnesses for Christ. As you look at this, a couple of passages, one in the latter part of Matthew's Gospel, we call it the Great Commission. It's similar words to it here. Jesus is talking to his disciples, much like he was saying in Acts, and he says these words, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. He said to them, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you to the very end of the age. I want you to note there it says, all authority. And I think that is coming through the Holy Spirit. So under the authority of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, we go to be the church. And so we have the authority of God and the power of the Holy Spirit in Christ, the whole Trinity, think about that. The whole Trinity is involved in our witness. One other passage I would note here is Paul's writing to Romans in 116. He says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. Well, this power and authority were what the disciples were lacking and that's the authority and power that came to them on the day of Pentecost. Matter of fact, the word that is used there is actually the word dunamis, which means dynamite. This is talking about like explosive kinds of power. If you see Peter, what was happening to him before Pentecost, Peter was fearful, he was uncertain, 
He had denied Jesus. He was in disarray. Then after Pentecost, you see Peter is totally changed. He's standing up boldly and proclaiming the name he denied previously. There were 3,000 people converted on that day. Well, that is explosive power, isn't it? It's amazing to, to see the transformation that not only took place in Peter's life, but all the disciples after the Spirit came into their lives. I know there's a lot of news these days regarding campus protests, and it's troubling to see those things. But what is not on the news is other things that are happening on many other campuses in our world. It's incredible to see that near revival type experiences are taking place on campuses, not only in America, but in other places as well. Uh, God is moving among our college students in America. I was listening to a podcast yesterday of the movement of the Lord in London also. It's amazing to consider the power of the Spirit at work, even in mass numbers of students on these college campuses. Truly a great witness to the further work of the Lord and the Holy Spirit moving in people's lives. So we see the principle of our witness, the power of our witness through the Holy Spirit. And the last part of this is the pattern of our witness. Actually, the mission statement of our church is based on Acts 1.8. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth. One of the questions I'm often asked as a pastor regarding missionary efforts that we do, why are we sending people to other places or supporting people in other places when the need is so great right here in our own backyard? Now, it's a great question for many. But the answer to that is, we do that because Jesus instructed us to do that. He said in Matthew 28, go into all the world. And the scripture that we know so well, John 3, 16, it says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son. In Acts 1, 8, here we see to go to the ends of the earth. So the focus is not just what's happening here, but what's happening across the world, a global vision and witness that is why we pray for and support missionaries. That is why we experience mission trips and look to do those. It's why we extend mission in our world in obedience to the commission of Christ for us and fulfilling his mission. I like what Paul Borthwick said about this. He says, we need bifocal vision. And before my eyes were fixed, I surely needed bifocal vision. We need bifocal vision, a balance of being concerned close to home and committed to world evangelism. And when you think about that, how did the gospel get to us here? From a global perspective, we say, well, it came from Europe, it came from England here. But what if those in England had said, we're not going to America. We're just going to stay right here. Think about the impact that would have had and, and on us and in the world. I'm thankful that my spiritual forefathers and mothers responded to the work of God's Holy Spirit and were willing to launch out starting in Jerusalem, going to Judea, going to Samaria, going to the ends of the earth. That's the pattern of our witness. But more personally, where does it start? It starts in Jerusalem. If you look at it here geographically, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. It starts in Jerusalem. Jerusalem was the holy city. Jerusalem was a place where Christ was crucified. Jerusalem was a place where Christ was resurrected. Jerusalem was a place where the Holy Spirit 
descended on the believers. It's a pivotal point in the early church. It's where it started. So where's our Jerusalem? Spanish Fort. Yes. But I think more personally, our family, our home. We're not just husbands and wives. We are Christian husbands and wives. We're not just mothers and fathers. We are Christian mothers and fathers. Our Jerusalem begins, I think, in our home. And it extends out to the community where we are. And I'm thankful for the missional efforts right here at our community, Prodigy Pantry, Family Promise, Baldwin Family Village, missions that we're engaged in. And even those that I'm not even aware of that are part of our Sunday school classes and small group, but it begins here. And as the Spirit breathes into that, it goes out. Well, in closing today, I want to challenge us. I want to challenge each of us to be very prayerful about our own witness. Someone has been an influence in your life. That's why you're here. Someone has been an influence in your life, maybe a family member, an extended family member, maybe a teacher, a coach, Hopefully a pastor. Someone has been an influence in your life. Someone has been a witness to you. So, as that has come to you, that God would use you as a channel of His grace to someone around you. Maybe a family member, a co-worker, a neighbor, or a friend or acquaintance. As reminded of Paul's prayerful approach of his witness in Colossians 4, 2, and 3. It says, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I'm in change, chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. And as we do this, we recognize that this is purely the work of God's Holy Spirit. As the Spirit directs us, perhaps to speak into the lives of someone else. I pray that we're not asking for armadillos. But that the Lord, through His Holy Spirit, may empower us to continue to exalt the person of Jesus. May we pray. Come Holy Spirit. We thank you on this glorious day as we celebrate the coming of the Spirit to fill believers. We thank you, God, that you have entrusted to us the greatest good news that we will ever be able to tell that exalts the person of Jesus who brings life and light to all. Lord, we pray that we would be receivers today, but not only receivers, but also givers, and continue to be responsive to the work of your Holy Spirit the opportunities that you would open up for us, that you make clear to us. As those who have witnessed to us, Lord, may we walk in like manner in our Jerusalem and carry it through to the ends of the earth. We pray in the name and in the authority of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Our hymn of response was found in number 420, 420. We stand and join.
Thanksgiving, God, thanks for this opportunity to be with all of you in worshiping on Pentecost Sunday in God's church with you. As we go forward, a few announcements we want to keep you reminded of to stay connected in ways to worship, study, and serve. Our Prime Timers is having a special edition fellowship on June 6th and another opportunity for Lunch Bunch on June the 19th, and you'll find more information in your bulletin there. And you can register now for our upcoming VBS um, for SCUBA, and you can do that. That Vacation Bible School will be June 10th through 13th, and your um, bulletin is filled with more announcements that you'll find helpful. As we prepare to depart from this place, may the Holy Spirit truly breathe on us as we go forward to be the church and the people who God has called us to be. Until we meet again, my friends, may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each of you. Shalom. Shalom.